How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week five, and we're about to win this game because we're going on the road to Georgia Tech. Um, we're two and two. Our two home games have been losses. Our two away games have been wins. So, I, I mean, you extrapolate out the data from there. Certainly, we have to win this game. And if we do it, we will probably be ranked again. We will end Georgia Tech's uh, current undefeated season. What have, uh, what have, who have they played so far? Georgia Tech beat Tulane pretty easily. Uh, had a good win against Notre Dame and then beat Clemson by a point. Clemson starts the season 0-2. Meanwhile, again... Um, oh, never mind. I guess we did have a home win. I didn't realize that we played Pitt at home. So, oh, that, that hurts my theory quite a bit. That means that we're still in danger. Although we are 100% still uh, in our road wins or, or our road games. So, I mean, again, extrapolate out the data. Uh, we're going to win against Georgia Tech and Ole Miss. And we'll win against Virginia and Notre Dame and North Carolina. So, like, those are all guaranteed wins. You can book it right now. Let's go ahead and do our recruiting, though, this, this week. Curious how things are going. And I just want to take a look down here at the uh, bottom of the board again, just to make sure that we're doing okay with uh, the players down here, making sure that we are picking up the best ones possible. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to give points to the guys on the bottom of the board. I just want to make sure that, you know, if we decide to give them points, that we would be able to catch up. And so far, it looks very solid so at this point i'm going to go ahead and say that uh anybody that we want on this board we should be able to at least make a dent in whatever deficit we do have so to me that says let's go find the best players possible let's try to pick those guys up uh I, mike harris this quarterback is I, i'm very on the fence about whether or not we want him he's a pocket passer which doesn't really fit my style but he's also 77 overall and could turn into something pretty impressive. Um, gosh, I'm really liking the leads that we're seeing with a lot of these pretty solid players. Brandon Blunt, the center, will give him some points. Um, what should we give him? 300 for now. And that gives us 300 to work with. And we will give another 150 to James Wilson. We'll use the remaining 150 to give a couple of scholarship offers. Now, I'm going to offer scholarships to the top players on our board just to show them that we do mean business. So, Greg Jones, this ridiculous 81 overall, five-star, number three wide receiver in the country, getting a scholarship offer. Rashad Howard, the Juco tackle, will get one. And who's next? Michael May, this crazy athlete. Was this the quarterback? I think that this was the quarterback. 84 throw power, 84 throw accuracy. He's quick. Uh, he can run with the ball. He can kind of catch the ball. Seems like an impressive player. He's going to get the scholarship offer as well. And then we have five guys ready to pick up visits. They are all pretty solid players. If Anthony Robbins at 69 overall is the worst, that's impressive. Uh, in this one, I'm curious. I don't know who we choose to uh, send these guys to. Maybe we go early in the season and send them to the Virginia Tech game. Or do we go late and hope that Duke isn't that great of a team and maybe it's an easier win? Um, you know, I'm kind of on the fence. I think if they don't have anybody currently, uh, you know, scheduled with a visit, we'll go early. So try to send these guys to the Virginia Tech game if we can. Um, and then if we can't do that, well, here we don't even have a choice. If we can't do that or if there's other people trying to pick them up, um, then we will hope for the best. Eric Perkins is actually being recruited by Virginia Tech. So I don't know if this actually makes any sense, but we're going to send him to the Virginia Tech game. Maybe just because... That way we can force him to see uh, us beat the other team actively going after him. And then, you know what, Anthony Robbins. We'll just sign everybody that we can to Virginia Tech. So that's uh, that's it for our recruiting. And I just want to shout this out. I don't know if you guys are aware, but two incredible uh, NCA content creators, Param Crow, who I'm sure that most of you guys have heard of, and Nitro Drive actually collabed together and made a fantastic comprehensive recruiting guide for this game so if you guys have any uh questions on how to get better at recruiting in this game uh that link is going to be well i'll put it uh up on a card right now that you can click on but both of their channels and a link to that video is going to be in this description so instead of breaking it down really in depth i'm just going to do what i would normally do and explain why i'm doing it and what i'm thinking 
etc. If that makes sense. Second thing, this is a collab video with a good friend of mine by the name of Nitro Drive. If at any point in the video he feels like he has something to add on, he will do that. All right, so by this point, you're probably wondering who just showed up on my screen. My name is Jack. I'm the editor for this channel, but I also run a channel called Nitro Drive that launched just a couple days ago with a video titled How CFB Revamped Revived NCAA Football 14. I know for sure that I could uh, watch it maybe a couple more times and, and pick up a few more tips. But moving forward, I do want to check just one thing. Top 25 polls, we dropped out of the rankings. We were 18th but we lost bad to BYU. How far down do we drop? We're not even receiving votes. Oh, that's not good. Well, thankfully some other teams were losing as well. South Carolina and Georgia took losses. So did Minnesota. These are all the teams that stay ranked. Uh, Oregon lost to Pitt by three. Ducks fall from third down to 13th. So a top 10 team losing there. And let's see, USC and Oregon will play this week. And USC looks strong. They just slaughtered Cal. Uh, any other ranked matchups? We got 21 UCF and 19 South Carolina. But beyond that, uh, no ranked teams really playing each other this week. And oh my gosh, I, just, I did not expect to see this. I was just clicking on it just for the hell of it. But Reese White is currently fourth in the, uh, the Heisman watch. He had 537 all-purpose yards last game. Uh, I mean, we got slaughtered by BYU and, and took the L, but look at that. I did not expect to see one of our players up here, the redshirt senior. 86 overall up here with a lot of crazy company. Spencer Sanders, Zach Charbonnet, Austin Jones, and Marquise Stepp. Um, okay. Well, we've been feeding him the, the ball a lot this season. I think we might continue to do that. But let's go ahead and load into this one. We are on the road, and our road uniform that has 100% win rate this season is the all-white, so we're going to stick with it. Uh, and Georgia Tech, I think they should have some very cool ones. Ooh, interesting on the Cape Day. The alternate three is pretty solid. The Navy's solid. I, I love it. I love it. We're going to give them the alternate three, though. That's when I like the custom gloves. Oh, that's fantastic. The Yellow Jackets, though, that would be ready to lose as uh, they are at 90 overall to our 83. Offense is a little bit closer. They have a big advantage on defense, though. We just have to play our game. We beat Texas. If we just play the way that we played against Texas, I think that we have a solid shot. So the Yellow Jackets seem to have a pretty solid offense going with, uh, uh, you know, middle-of-the-road defense. Meanwhile, our offense is kind of yikes, and our defense is even worse, so I don't like that. Top players, a corner, a corner, and a running back. Two really good corners is bad news for us, uh, and a good running back is also terrible news for us. Dude had 60 carries last game. Oh, no, no, no. That, that does not bode well. Well, here we go, I guess. Oh, in Georgia, what can we do? I am scared now for the running game. Tails has failed. And we are going to start with the ball. Well, Reese White, now that we know he's on a Heisman campaign, maybe can get us started strong. This is a fieldable ball. A yard inside the end zone. The blocking was not great, but Reese made something out of it and managed to get back to that 25-yard line. We're going to open up this game with a read option. Hopefully Grayson can do some work. Uh, on the ground, but as we start this game off, hey, I want to take the time to thank everybody. 1,500 subscribers on the channel it means so much, and I appreciate every single one of you. Fantastic carry on first down. It looks like they want to bring a safety on the blitz. We're going with the counter. Reese gets met behind the line of scrimmage and loses two yards. And again, they have a pretty solid secondary, so we got to be careful throwing the ball. I almost just threw a pick. I uh, kind of thought we were running an out route, not a little curl. So third and 12. This one's going to be dangerous as well. We know they have a good secondary. They know we have to pass. Outside the pocket, Grayson. Oh my gosh, I had a chance to scramble, but the dude with the massive diving tackle gets the sack. We have to punt this one away. That's an awful start to this game. Good news for us is that Frederick isn't that great of a punter. So we might be able to cheese this just a little bit. I need this to hit the turf and get past the return man. Thank goodness we had something good happen for us. He is going to field it, but that's going to give us a chance to flip the field position. Is this the running back? Two massive stiff arms in a row there for Dante Smith. 
All right, this running back had 60 carries last game. We're going to expect them to give him the ball. We'll open this up with a man blitz, and it works. Griffin loses two yards. I'm so curious what their play calling is. Because uh, now they come out five wide on second and 12. They're going to pass the ball. Guys open all over the field. We will get them in a third down, but uh, we can't give up 10 there. Kind of worried about the quarterback, but they've gone in the hurry up the, for this third and two. And we got the stop fourth and one. They might go for this, but we could have got the stop. It's a fourth and one. The punt team is out. We're going to be here in the, uh, the zone, the safe zone, just to make sure they don't try to fake this on us. And I'm going to try to let that bounce into the end zone. Oh, no, 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 no. Get to the end zone. Oh, it took such a weak bounce. Should have taken the fair catch. And now we are backed up to our own three-yard line to start this drive. That was a terrible decision. And again, they're bringing massive pressure. We need to avoid the safety. The blocking was good enough to get out a little bit of trouble. On the second and eight, we're going to hand it off to the fullback. Again, I don't feel comfortable with uh, the pressure that they're showing. It's third and six, and ah, oh, we're in a tough spot. All right, well, we're going to go to the air here. Uh, Fountain has the one-on-one. -on -one. We're throwing that. Yeah, I just got to trust in the man. Oh, my God, he was broken. His leg look, looked absolutely decimated. Oh, my goodness. Dion got hit so hard, his head started to face into the ground, and his foot went entirely underneath the turf. He lost a hand as well. <laughs> what a nasty hit. So, for now, we're out of danger. First and 10. We will give this to Reese. And that's a great run. From a Heisman hopeful, 11 yards on the carry up the middle. See if we can catch these guys out on the pass on this first down. Outside the pocket circle was kind of open. Square's going to be wide open. Dion Fountain, can he pick up the block? He could for a second. Oh, if that would have been held for longer, it's a touchdown. But we still got 37 yards out of the play. First down. Read option time. This one's going to go to Reese. They're not letting Grayson really take... Uh, control of the game with his legs. So that's fine if they're going to give up eight yards on the carry, though. Try the play action on this second and three. And this is a terribly risky throw, but we found Tyson Mobley for 12 yards. And another first down marching down the field here. All righty. Inside the red zone, handing this ball off on first down. The blocking looked to be decent and we made positive yards. And as long as we're moving forward, I'm fine to continue to run. We'll try the counter on second and seven. The blocking looked weak, but oh, Reese had a great spin move. I thought he had a whole lot more than two waiting for him, though. Third and five will look to the air and Dion Fountain on the corner. There it is. The little curl route there uh, into the end zone. I didn't think he was going to score, but he just barely crosses the goal line and it's enough for us to take the lead. So... After a bad first drive from us, the defense held. Uh, I made a terrible decision on the punt, you know, letting them down it at the three, but we marched the length of the field and got it done. It's first down. We're bringing a big man blitz again as they're going to step back to pass, but the quarterback takes the sack. Lucky that it's only a loss of a yard, but that's great news for us. I'm just really surprised they're not running it more. Maybe expecting it here. No, they will go to the air again. Quarterback feeling the pressure, and he gets sacked again. It's third and long. We have a chance maybe to get off the field for the second drive in a row. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. What a way for this game to start as, uh, you know, our defense has been pretty solid so far. And we have the lead. Now what we're looking for is a stop on third and 13. Need to prevent them from picking up that first down over the middle. Mason Shelton couldn't bring down Ryan King in time. They do pick up that first down. First and 10. They're going to go to the air again. A little flat routes open. He gets the stiff arm cheese for the first down as well. So this could be the spot where they start to steamroll us. Kind of expecting the run. They will hand it off. Mackey got blocked into the path of Griffin and gets the stop at the line of scrimmage. I'm going to expect... Uh, a pass on this second and 10. And they will go to the air. I saw it a little bit too late coming across the top, but we did get him in another third down here. Third and three with a running back who has done a ton 
so far this season. Can we bring the pressure? No. They're going to throw it. Man is open, and he is able to stay in bounds for a first down. We brought the blitz, and it just didn't quite work. And we're going to continue to bring that blitz as they are still running the ball. Every time they've run, we've been blitzing, so working very well for us so far. Second and 11. We keep having great first downs, but we need to finish it off. What can we do here? They will step back to pass. And over the middle of the field, uh, the quarterback just missed his man for the first time this game. Six of seven for him now. So that's going to give us a third and 11 to work with. We know it's going to be a pass. The question is, can we stop it? Quarterback's going to start to scramble. No, he stepped up to the line of scrimmage and made the pass. Oh my gosh, I thought he was about to take off and just left my zone. That is not what you want to see is on this first and goal. They're going to bring a man in motion. No screen or anything. Tight end isn't the one that we have to worry about. It's Ryan King at the goal line. We're bringing the pressure, calling it a run up the middle. Second and goal. I just have to expect this uh, running back to get the carry, and he won't, so they have to have somebody open, and yeah, there it is. Easy touchdown for the quarterback. You know, I, I just... He had 60 carries last game. I have to expect him to be getting more touches than he has so far today. All right. Well, we got to get it done again here. 358 left in the half. And another returnable ball for Reese. The blocking better than the first attempt. He's got a lot of space. Reese has one man miss the tackle and falls forward. We're across midfield to start this drive. Infinitely better field position than the last one where we started from the three. We're going to hand this off to Reese. He just had the return, but he gets a dive up the middle and he gets two yards for us. Second and eight will step back to pass. I want to look over the middle of the field, but I don't feel comfortable. And we'll just make the kind of safe throw to Malden. We got positive yards. That's what matters. I thought for sure that defensive back was about to try to stop the scramble. So uh, tried to throw it over his head. It didn't quite work as let's see. Can we motion Malden over here? Oh, OK, I guess we're motioning Mobley. That's fine. We just want that extra blocker. It's not going to matter, though, Reese. Unable to pick up enough for the first down. Fourth and three. We have to go for this. Unfortunately, we're not in field goal range. So we're going to come out five wide looking for this. Let's put Johnson on that. And let's hope that somebody is open. That's a terribly risky throw, but we found Aaron Bedgood. 12 yards and he held onto it through the contact. Something about being on the road against a ranked team gets this uh, squad fired up to play. And I am absolutely fine with it. Grayson McCall keeping it. We're trying to follow the blockers. <laughs> the number 71 was just a little bit too slow, though. Still got a quick first down. Give this ball back to Reese from the 11-yard line. Trying to follow the blockers again. We get north. Man, that was a hard hit. Two more yards on the play. That was the kind of hit where a lot of times Reese would fumble the ball if he was going to. So thankfully, he held on to it. I'm looking for him here, but no, we'll go to Malden, who, oh, oh, wow, got hit on perfect timing from that DB. I thought that that was certainly a touchdown, but I was quickly proved wrong. We're going to audible out of this one. Try to find our guys in the end zone. Let's just make sure they're going that far. And we'll step back to pass third and eight. Is somebody open? No. Bedgood caught it, though, but he was running the wrong direction. It's fourth and five. This is a tough spot. And unfortunately, we're going to have to settle for the field goal. I'm going to try to let this clock burn out so they don't have time to score before halftime. But Frederick needs to hit this. Ooh, that got scary. It does go through. 45 seconds left in the half. We take a three-point lead. Really wanted a touchdown, though. I expect this to be a returnable kick for Georgia Tech. Now we need to stop them before they get too much. Oh no, that's a great return. Great return. There's a flag down though, so they burned five seconds off the clock and this has to be a clipping? Beautiful. That's going to bring them back quite a ways. Well, we're going to expect the passing. Question is, will we be able to stop it here? Not a whole lot of time. That would have been great, except he got the first down. Ryan King, 12 yards right over the middle. I'm honestly expecting a whole lot more uh, deep passing than we're getting, so it's kind of burning me. As, again, they go just the short throw over the middle, and they're driving down the field real quick here. They take their first time out with 28 seconds left. Well, goodness, like, I want to have safeties so that we don't get burned deep, but 
They're thrown over the middle of the field, so we're going to try to cover two on this one. And hope for the best. Somebody's going to be open, isn't it? Yeah, there it is. Ryan King in field goal range. 22 seconds left. All right. Defense has to figure out something. They're going to run this ball. Not so sure about that decision. They take their second timeout with 19 seconds. And I got to imagine they're going to be looking towards the end zone. Stepping back to pass. Man open over the middle. S picked up another freaking first down, though, so it stops the clock. Just feel like I can't afford to... Uh, ignore the deep ball so i have to have these safeties because i don't want them to throw it deep on us although is it gonna matter griffin got another first down and they take their final timeout so we did hold them to a field goal here and you know this is actually great news five seconds on the clock means we're gonna get the chance to return the ball you never know what reese white has uh, up his sleeve says this kick is easily good 10 all two seconds left in the half and this is gonna be our chance to uh Maybe take the lead before the half. It will be returned from Reese. He's going to need more than just incredible blocking. Uh, and he's not going to get it. <laughs> 24 yards on the return. But it's going to be the end of the first half. 10 all. Oh, defense needs to come out and, and get a stop, I think, to start the third quarter. Uh, they've done a decent job besides that final drive of the half. Um, we're just going to continue to bring the pressure and try to stop the run. Go ahead and let Frederick boot this one away. And that's not a great kick. Fielding it at the four. Georgia Tech had a good return last time before the penalty. It's a mediocre return this time. Opening up this half, we're going to resume the man blitz as they ran a screen on the play. Oh my gosh, Ryan King is hard to tackle. We're going to keep this blitz coming. Second and two. It is a handoff. Cheney was there to slow him down, and he gets brought down for a loss of two, so third and four. Jameis Griffin not having a great game running the ball. We did bring a little blitz here, and Steele is there to bring him down as they tried to run it on third down. The blitz worked, and we got the stop we needed. The question is, what can we make of it? Likely going to be taking a fair catch, if, if not returning this punt, because... Last time we let it try to bounce towards the end zone, it did not work, although this is a very returnable ball. Good side of the 25. Reese uh, made a little bit of it. We're starting with pretty good field position here. We're going to go with the read option to open up this uh, first half. I'm going to bring Bedgood in motion, get him a little bit closer in so I don't have to worry about not seeing the, uh, the man out there. Oh my gosh, three linemen in front of us. It's a shame we couldn't get more than 12 yards. Try to go to the air. Five wide on first and 10. There's a throw to Tyson Mobley. And man, that was a strong, strong catch from him. I'm curious if we can finish this game uh, strong on offense. We've been doing a decent job all game long. Oh, Reese couldn't quite get the first down there, though. You'd be fooling yourself if you thought we weren't going to run the ball on third and one. Hoping for the best. The line did enough for us. And we're going to be spotted three yards on that play, moving the chains. Let's try a little play action boot on this one. First and 10. Outside the pocket. Circles wide open. Can we get it there? Dion Fountain. Nobody around him. The easiest catch of his career. Finds him 40 yards into the end zone. Grayson McCall, 9 of 11 on the day. Finally hits Pater with that throw. The play calling worked beautifully, and we will take the lead once again. All right, Frederick, booting that one away again. Defense has done a very good job today. So far, the special teams needs to help out, though. That was a great return for Dante Smith. There was no penalty to bail us out that time, as this first down is going to be a handoff, and we again get the stop. I think that was Sidney McRae getting him for a loss of a yard. We are just eating these guys alive in the running game. Jameis Griffin, seven carries. He's averaging uh, a yard and a half lost on each of his carries. We're really struggling to stop the passing game, though. That doesn't mean that we're going to really change anything up, as this one's going to go to the air. And, oh, I was there with Diggs, but I got beat. And Ryan King continues to impress. King now has, like... Seven catches for a ridiculous amount of yards. Quarterback scrambling. He's getting lost in the pocket, but he came out free and got two yards. The quarterback was running in circles back there, but still managed to uh, 
find some space to run. He's running again. Durham Finch gets the sack. It's a loss of three, and it's another third and long for us. So that gives us a third and 12 to work with. They're going to step back to pass. He's going to be open. Oh, are we going to get called for a pass interference? Oh. That's devastating. Miles Baker, the free safety, got a little bit too aggressive in trying to stop that pass and gets called for it. Again, they're running the ball. And again, could they lose yards? He broke two tackles, but still loses two on the play. Their running game is just getting obliterated. Second and 12, they're going to hand this one off. And did he finally get some positive yards? Only two. So third and 10, he just got what he lost on the last one. So we'll see what we can do as they will go back to pass. They're running the slip screen. I was too late to react to it. He tries to hurdle. It works, but he gets tackled short of the line to gain, and it's fourth and three. And these guys are coming out to, well, they came out to kick the field goal. There's a false start, though, so we'll back them up five yards. I expect that that's going to be pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of things as, yeah, they do hit the field goal anyways. And, uh, well, we retain the lead. When have we ever been so good at stopping the run? It's blowing my mind. A minute left in the third. We want to get this into the fourth quarter, I think, as quick as possible. Reese just outrunning a man. Stiff arm cheese gets past the 30-yard line. Reese is having a good game. We're going to try to let him continue that. So we give him four yards. That's about three times as many as their running back has. And I will say for, uh... As good as it feels like Reese is doing, he has like less than 50 yards on the day. Trying to extend that number by quite a bit here. Trying to take an angle and he picks up a, a decent chunk there. Our 10th first down of the game and maybe we can just let this get into the fourth quarter. And this will be the final play of the third quarter as we'll try to run it uh, to the longer side of the field there. Out towards the edge, cutting it north, just making sure we get positive yards, getting past the line of scrimmage, and we can uh, let this clock burn out, and we can go into the fourth quarter with a four-point lead against a ranked 3-0 Georgia Tech. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, we have the ball. I don't want to settle for a field goal, but if it comes down to that, I wouldn't be too upset. So we start this fourth quarter from the 40-yard line in a second-and-eight situation. There's Reese. Oh my gosh, he held on to that through the contact. Got us four more yards. And this game has been mostly, you know, sh uh, short plays, man. They're bringing pressure. I got to be really careful on this run in the play action. We're going to get out of that as quick as possible. Triangle's open. Tyson Mobley holds on to it. A good job getting to that ball. It wasn't the best thrown one, but it's enough for the first down. And at this point, I'm not sure that there's a whole lot that they can do to slow our momentum down. We're doing very well. Uh, we just got to make sure we keep moving. I really want to throw one of these uh, wide receiver screens, but they keep lining up all too well for it. So we'll just kind of audible out of that one and throw probably an interception. Bad good back of the end zone. Thankfully, it just falls incomplete. Uh, that, that DB was way too tall to make that throw. Third and six on the play. Obviously, I love the route that Bedgood's on, but I'm not going to, oh my gosh, force myself to throw it. I hit the wrong button there. Fourth and six. I don't know if we can hit this field goal. And yeah, it's too far for us to kick that reliably. Thankfully, we have Dion Fountain. Oh, we can run the safe little curl route and keep the drive alive. That first down puts us at the 15, and I feel very confident now. So we're going to start to burn this clock out and hope for the best. I've instructed everybody to just focus on ball security for the rest of this game. So hopefully we don't turn the ball over. I think we're in field goal range. So there's not much of a chance of us honestly losing this at this point. Especially when you get five yards there and get us a third and one. Georgia Tech needs to really consider starting to use these timeouts. We are going to give this one to Barr, the fullback. And he's got enough for the first down a little bit more. JJ is having a great season as, a, as a, our freshman fullback. We haven't called his number a whole lot, but we haven't had to. As we're going to audible outside of the read option. Continue to burn this clock down to the last second on every single play because they will add up. And that's going to be a touchdown for Reese White. No, stop short. He got a yard, but honestly, that's best case scenario for us. 
Second and goal that allows us to burn another 40 seconds off the clock. We're below two minutes. And from the one yard line, we'll run this halfback dive. Reese will find the end zone that time. Man, they did hit him behind the line of scrimmage, but it doesn't matter. Eight carries for 40 yards on that drive, and he finishes it off with a touchdown. So Georgia Tech has to score twice. They're down 11. They need either two touchdowns or a touchdown with a two-point conversion and then an, uh, a field goal. But with, uh, you know, as, as little time as there is left on this clock, we know that they're going to have to be going to the air and plays like that, well... They should hurt them, and yeah, thankfully they will. No first down to the running back. And they've been throwing those short uh, routes all game long. This quarterback is having much too easy of a time. Here's another first down. It's really not working all that well for us. They go to the air again. Oh, I left the running back open. Almost got there in time to pick it off, but we do tackle them inbounds. We're just going to continue to stick with this. Second and seven. They step back to pass. Again, the quarterback has a man over the middle. There is a first down. But again, the clock's moving and they have to score twice. So while this is maybe a little bit closer than I would like it, it's working pretty well for us. Quarterback throwing for the end zone. Morris got beat. Not quick enough to catch up to the man. And they score 59 seconds left on the clock. And they have elected to go for two on this one. We're going to use her Sidney McCray. Try to get a little bit of pressure on this quarterback. Wide open. He finds a man on the slant route. It's a three-point game. We are not out of this one yet. It's the hands team out on the field. Oh, thankfully, Beasley picks it up. And we're just going to burn a little bit of clock here. But running backwards. <laughs> we got three more seconds burned off. And for sure, a first down would end this game. They're going to be having to take their timeouts. What can we do to just burn as much time as we can? 52 seconds, they take their first timeout. I'm a little bit worried that we're not going to be able to pick up the first down on the ground. Hopefully, Reese can do well enough. And no, we're getting met at the line of scrimmage every time. Third and 10, second timeout taken. And as much as I want to pass for a first down, forcing them to take that timeout is so necessary. So we're going to go with the read option. Hopefully it's the right decision. Reese. Oh, didn't get enough for the first down. It's fourth and three. And I really hope this doesn't bite us in the ass. I don't like the idea of giving them the ball. Their offense has been moving it way too easily. So instead, we're going to try and pick up this first down on fourth down. X is open. It was more than we had him open, but I was, oh, I was throwing on the run on accident. I tried to stop, but mm, that might have just cost us the game. All righty, three-man rush for this. A field goal sends it to overtime. Hopefully, it doesn't get to that. We could see some clock mismanagement. It is burning. No timeouts available for this squad. They spike the ball. It's third and two. A first down probably gets them close to uh, field goal territory. A little bit of pressure. Quarterback all the time in the world does find a man potentially in that field goal range. They're going to have to still be worried about this clock. We know it's going to be a pass. We expect to see the spike here. 18 seconds, 17. The clock burning down to 16. They spike the ball. Oh, I don't want to lose in the heartbreaker right here. I'm still going to stand by the decision to go for it on fourth down because I do think that they would still be able to march down the, the length of the field if they needed to. Had we punted it to them, that was... Oh, that's game. I don't know how he didn't get tackled there. Absolutely zero idea. There's nine seconds left. GG's. Are you kidding me? What the heck just happened on that play? Went for the swat on the pass, which would have been great, but couldn't get it. Missed tackle. And the dive just somehow doesn't even affect him as he gets to the goal line and gets in. So this is going to take an incredible return from Reese White. And then we're going to have to get out of bounds before the clock uh, burns and throw up a four vert or something. The blocking, uh, it was really good for a second, but not enough. Well, we need a, a quick play or something. Somebody needs to be open early. That gives us a chance for a Hail Mary. I don't know if we throw a Hail Mary or if we throw a four verts is the problem. I think I want to throw a four verts. It gives a chance for somebody to just burn their man and get free. Um, this is going to be a miracle if it happens. Can I bring uh, Mobley back to block? No, I can't. 
All righty. Praying. 10 seconds on the clock, or in the, in the game clock. We'll snap this. Somebody has a step on the rail. I couldn't get it off. Our square was going to be wide open. I don't know who it was, but we get hit throwing the ball. And we don't even have the chance to get that completed. Oh my gosh. What a terrible way to lose. You know, it doesn't help when their quarterback has one incompletion for the entire game. But, oh no. We had so many opportunities to win that. Just couldn't uh, complete it when it mattered. Grayson, that missed uh, pass to a wide open receiver on fourth down with the game on the line really is going to haunt us. Why does this always happen? Such a brutal game. We gave up 335 passing yards. We held them to negative 11 rushing yards. We destroyed their running game, but we just couldn't stop the pass to save our lives. Those passes over the middle, those short passes that just went for massive amounts of yards time in and time out. No reason for us to have lost that, but we give up 15 in the fourth quarter. Oh, that hurts. So back-to-back -back losses puts us at two and three on the season. I guess I was wrong about us winning on the road against ranked teams. I guess I was wrong about those all-white uniforms. Hopefully Georgia Tech turns out to be a quality loss, though. They're now 4-0. They need to do well. So, two good recruits ready to visit. Again, there's always a little silver lining, however small it may be. We did get some extra XP, but now we have to go on the road to Oxford to play Ole Miss. Uh, they might have just lost their 2-2, two and two, number 22 in the country. A lot of twos there. Um, yeah, they just lost on the road at a 4-1 Bama. So not a bad loss. They, their other loss is to n the current number 5 Florida. So this is going to be tough. And uh, at least we'll be able to see those beautiful like powder blue uniforms when, when we struggle to beat these guys. But unfortunately, that's going to be it for this episode. Oh my gosh. I hate that we lost that. I, we absolutely... 100% should have won that game. I just kind of choked when it mattered. Uh, story of my life. But we can't change the past, so we just got to hope that we can move on. And uh, hopefully we can win this next one. I want to say thank you guys. 1,500 subs is incredible. And if you haven't done that yet, please feel free to go down and hit the subscribe button. 75% of the people that will watch this video won't be subscribed, so... I mean, if you're here and you liked it, please feel free to uh, change that and then maybe head on down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster where we play a lot of non-NCAA sporting content. Uh, there's also links to my Twitter and our community Discord as well as a link to get the college football revamped mod if that's something you're interested in. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. Wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.